In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Enterprise Manager to create a new protection policy on a zero data loss recovery appliance. We are starting on the Enterprise Summary page in Enterprise Manager. This demo environment already has the ZDLRA plugin installed and the ZDLRA discovered. The first step is to navigate to the ZDLRA homepage. We will go to Targets, Recovery Appliances. Then we will select the RA where we want to create the protection policy. In this environment, there is only one A. How, there is only one RA. However, additional RAs in your environment could be listed here. Once we are on the RA homepage, we will select the protection policies options from the recovery appliance drop down menu. Here you will see all the protection policies that currently exist on this RA. The RA comes with four pre-created policies. You can choose to use any of these policies if they meet your requirements. However, most customers will choose to create their own. To create a new policy, start by clicking on the Create button. A policy name is required. I will name this policy standard production. The description is optional and I will leave it blank. The storage location is where the backups will be placed on the appliance. There should only be one storage location on the appliance, so we can just skip this section. The disk recovery window goal specifies the minimum time the recovery appliance will retain the backups. In this example, I will set it to seven days. The unprotected data window threshold specifies the maximum amount of time that can pass without the RA receiving redo. Once this threshold is exceeded, the RA will raise an alert. When using real-time redo shipping, this value should be set fairly low since the redo will be sent continuously. However, if real-time redo shipping is not implemented, this value should be set longer than the archive backup interval. For example, if archive logs will be backed up every six hours, this value should be set to at least seven hours. In this example, we will be using real-time redo shipping. So I will set it to 15 minutes. The media manager recovery window policy is only applicable when using copy to tape jobs. It specifies how long to retain the backups on the external device. In this case, we are not going to use copy to tape, so I will leave it blank. The maximum of this backup retention specifies the maximum time the RA will retain backups on the RA itself. Remember that the disk recovery window goal specified the minimum retention. If the RA has enough space available, it will retain backups longer than the disk recovery window goal, up to the maximum disk retention. When the maximum disk backup retention is reached, the RA will delete all the backups older than the disk recovery window goal all as one batch. This value should be set higher than the disk recovery window goal. I recommend setting it to five days longer, so I will set it to 12 days. We will now review the advanced parameters. Backup and redo failover specifies that this RA will be used to temporarily store backups and redo for another RA while that RA is unavailable. Once the other RA becomes available, this RA will forward the backups and redo to it, then delete them here. 
We are not going to use this feature, this example, so I will leave it unchecked. Backup deletion specifies whether the RA will allow the deletion of backups via the RMAN delete command. We recommend leaving this unchecked so that the backups can only be deleted by the RA itself based on disk recovery window goals. Backup polling location specifies a shared mount point where the RA can read backups rather than the database sending them directly to the RA. This feature is not often used and I'm not going to configure it here. Backup copy policy specifies whether the RA can delete backups that have not yet been either replicated or copied to another media. This only applies when the RA is low on space and needs to delete backups in order to accept new backups. We recommend leaving this as the default, which is to always accept new backups. The archive log backup compression algorithm only applies to redo that is received using the real-time redo shipping feature. Archive log backups sent by RMAN is never compressed by the RA itself. Those archive log backups must be compressed by RMAN itself before they are sent to the RA. Note that this only applies to archive logs, not database backups. Database backups are always automatically compressed by the RA itself. We recommend using either low or medium. We have reviewed and set all the attributes. So now I will just click OK and the protection policy will be created. Now you can see our new protection policy with its attributes in the list. I hope you found this demonstration to be educational and useful.